The Ass and Its Shadow A traveler had hired an ass to carry him to a distant part of the country. The owner of the ass went with the traveler, walking beside him to drive the ass and point out the way. The road led across a treeless plain where the sun beat down fiercely. So intense did the heat become that the traveler at last decided to stop for a rest, and as there was no other shade to be found, the traveler sat down in the shadow of the ass. Now, the heat had affected the driver as much as it had the traveler, and even more, for he had been walking. Wishing also to rest in the shade cast by the ass, he began to quarrel with the traveler, saying he had hired the ass and not the shadow it cast. The two soon came to blows, and while they were fighting, the ass took to its heels. In quarreling about the shadow, we often lose the substance. The Miller, His Son, and the Ass One day, a long time ago, an old miller and his son were on their way to market with an ass which they hoped to sell. They drove him very slowly, for they thought they would have a better chance to sell him if they kept him in good condition. As they walked along the highway, some travelers laughed loudly at them. What foolishness! cried one. To walk when they might as well ride. The most stupid of the three is not the one you'd expect it to be. The miller did not like to be laughed at, so he told his son to climb up and ride. They had gone a little farther along the road when three merchants passed by. Oh ho! What have we here? they cried. Respect all days, young man, get down, and let the old man ride. Though the miller was not tired, he made the boy get down and climbed up himself to ride, just to please the merchants. At the next turnstile, they overtook some women carrying market baskets loaded with vegetables and other things to sell. Look at the old fool! exclaimed one of them. Parsed on the ass! Why, that poor boy has to walk. The miller felt a bit vexed, but to be agreeable, he told the boy to climb up behind him. They had no sooner started out again than a loud shout went up from another company of people on the road. What a crime, cried one. To load up a poor dumb beast like that. They look more able to carry the poor creature than he to carry them. They must be on their way to sell the poor things hard, said another. The miller and his son quickly scrambled down, and a short time later the marketplace was thrown into an uproar as the two came along carrying the donkey slung from a pole. A great crowd of people ran out to get a closer look at the strange sight. The ass did not dislike being carried. But so many people came up to point at him and laugh and shout that he began to kick and bray. And then, just as they were crossing a bridge, the ropes that held him gave way, and down he tumbled into the river. The poor miller now set out sadly for home. By trying to please everybody, he had pleased nobody and lost his ass besides. If you try to please all, you please none. The Ant and the Dove A dove saw an ant fall into a brook. The ant struggled in vain to reach the bank, and in pity, the dove dropped a blade of straw close beside it. Clinging to the straw like a shipwrecked sailor to a broken spar, the ant floated safely to shore. Soon after, the ant saw a man getting ready to kill the dove with a stone. But just as he cast the stone, the ant stung him in the heel, so that the pain made him miss his aim, and the startled dove flew to safety in a distant wood. A kindness is never wasted. The Man and the Satyr A long time ago, a man met a satyr in the forest and succeeded in making friends with him. 
the two soon became the best of comrades, living together in the man's hut. But one cold winter evening, as they were walking homeward, the satyr saw the man blow on his fingers. Why do you do that? asked the satyr. To warm my hands, the man replied. When they reached home, the man prepared two bowls of porridge. These he placed steaming hot on the table, and the comrades sat down very cheerfully to enjoy the meal. But, match to the satyr's surprise, the man began to blow into his bowl of porridge. Why do you do that? he asked. To cook my porridge, replied the man. The satyr sprang hurriedly to his feet and made for the door. Goodbye, he said. I've seen enough. A fellow that blows hot and cold in the same breath cannot be friends with me. The man who talks for both sides is not to be trusted by either. The Wolf, the Kid, and the Goat Mother Goat was going to market one morning to get provisions for her household, which consisted of but one little kid and herself. Take good care of the house, my son, she said to the kid as she carefully latched the door. Do not let anyone in unless he gives you this password. Down with the wolf and all his race. Strangely enough, a wolf was lurking near and heard what the goat had said. So as soon as Mother Goat was out of sight, up he trotted to the door and knocked. Down with the wolf and all his race, said the wolf softly. It was the right password, but when the kid peeped through a crack in the door and saw the shadowy figure outside, he did not feel at all easy. Show me a white paw, he said, or I won't let you in. A white paw, of course, is a feature few wolves can show, and so Master Wolf had to go away as hungry as he had come. You can never be too sure, said the kid, when he saw the wolf making off to the woods. Two sureties are better than one. The Swallow and the Crow The Swallow and the crow had an argument one day about their plumage. Said the swallow, Just look at my bright and downy feathers. Your black stiff quills are not worth having. Why don't you dress better? Show a little pride. Your feathers may do very well in spring, replied the crow. But I don't remember ever having seen you around in winter. And that's what I enjoy myself most. Friends in fine weather only are not worth much. Jupiter and the Monkey There was once a baby show among the animals in the forest. Jupiter provided the prize. Of course, all the proud mamas from far and near brought their babies. But none got there earlier than Mother Monkey. Proudly, she presented her baby among the other contestants. As you can imagine, there was quite a laugh when the animals saw the ugly, flat-nosed, hairless, pop-eyed little creature. Laugh if you will, said the mother monkey. Though Jupiter may not give him the prize, I know that he is the prettiest, the sweetest, and dearest darling in the world. Mother Love is Blind The Lion, the Ass, and the Fox A lion, an ass, and a fox were hunting in company and caught a large quantity of game. The ass was asked to divide the spoil. This he did very fairly, giving each an equal share. The fox was well satisfied, but the lion flew into a great rage over it, and with one stroke of his huge paw, he added the ass to the pile of slain. Then he turned to the fox. You divide it, he roared angrily. The fox wasted no time in talking. He quickly piled all the game into one great heap. From this, he took a very small portion for himself. Such 
undesirable bits as the horns and hoofs of a mountain goat and the end of an ox tail. The lion now recovered his good humor entirely. Who taught you to divide so fairly? He asked pleasantly. I learned a lesson from the ass, replied the fox, carefully edging away. Learn from the misfortunes of others. The Lion's Share A long time ago, the lion, the fox, the jackal, and the wolf agreed to go hunting together, sharing with each other whatever they found. One day, the wolf ran down a stag and immediately called his comrades to divide the spoil. Without being asked, the lion placed himself at the head of the feast to do the carving, and with a great show of fairness, began to count the guests. One, he said, counting on his claws. That is myself, the lion. Two, that is the wolf. Three is the jacker. And the fox makes four. He then very carefully divided the stag into four equal parts. I am King Lion, he said when he had finished. So of course I get the first part. This next part falls to me because I'm the strongest. And this is mine because I'm the bravest. He now began to glare at the others very savagely. If any of you have any claim to the part that is left, he growled, stretching his claws meaningly, now is the time to speak up. Might makes right. Mm -hmm.